flowers are some of the most beautiful parts of creation. Everybody loves them. But what's their function? What do they do? What are the parts that make them up? Let's go find out. Flowers. These are the reproductive structures of plants. In other words, these are the structures that plants produce in order to create the next generation of plants. So how do the flowers do that? Well, that all is a function of their anatomy. So let's learn about the anatomy of a flower and that will help us to understand how flowers work as far as pollination. So first of all, we have the stem. The stem is gonna come up from the ground and all that. And then we, coming off the stem, we have what's called the petiole. The petiole is the part of the flower, uh, the part of the stem that actually supports the flower. And that's this part right here. Now the covering, we see these un, unopened parts right here. These are the buds of the flower. And they are covered by this protective covering that's called the sepals. And if we open those up, you can actually see on the inside, they're kind of holding together pretty good here. Come on, open up, there we go. If we open up the sepals, you can see on the inside, there are some of the immature flower parts right there. And if I rub those, what you'll notice as I rub those black things is that there's nothing on my finger at that point. There's nothing on my finger because there's no pollen. These are immature parts of the flower. So the mature flower is where we're gonna have the pollen. So let's check this out. Those very sepals in many flowers will stay green. They're the little green thing that sits underneath what's called the capsule or the base of the flower right there. But in some flowers such as the lily, uh, the lily is a type of monocotyledon, if you don't know your monocots from your dicots, check out the video I have on that. So these sepals actually turn the same colors as the petals, very similar colors, and they also act like petals to attract in insects or birds or whatever to pollinate the flower. Uh, so if I peel those sepals off, you can see, you can see these three sepals, these are the, these are the petals, all right, the sepals, they're on the outside and you can see these are the actual true petals and they're on the inside. Uh, those are on the inside. So there's your petals and these are your sepals out here. So let's pull the sepals off like that. It gets us down to just the petals and let's pull the petals off like that. And that gets us down to just the reproductive part. What I've removed is collectively called the corolla, like the crown, not corona, but corolla, okay? And that is the circle, if you will, of petals and sepals that are supposed to be big and beautiful and gorgeous and attracting lots of insects. Now, inside of that, inside of the flowers, we have both the male and the female parts. Now, some plants, they produce a flower that has just a male part and other flowers that produce just female parts. In other plants, they produce a flower that will first have male parts and then have female parts. In other plants, we have uh, the male and female parts together, but in all different kinds of arrangements. And the arrangement of them all depends on their pollination vector. A pollination vector is what the plant uses to get the pollen from here, the anther, to the tip right there, which is the stigma. That's the goal of pollination. Move pollen from here to here. Now I showed you on the immature flower inside the bud, those real black anthers, they had no pollen on them. But look at this mature. As I get the mature, if you look on my finger now, oh, it's not coming off. There we go. If you look at my finger now, you can see all of that amazing orange pollen. That amazing orange pollen is all coming from these mature anthers. So the stamen, which is the male part of the plant, it consists of a filament right here and the anther right there. And that anther is what produces the pollen. So you have the filament and then you have the anther. If I remove all of these stamen, then we are left with just the female part, which is called the pistil. The pistil can be composed of one or more what are called carpels. And a carpel contains 
the stigma, which is the very tip up here, the style, which is the tube that connects the stigma with the ovary down here, right down in here, and the ovary down here is inside of that is where we have the ova, which are the eggs. That's what the seeds, that's what's going to become the seeds once they have been fertilized. Now, pollination is the process of getting, um, to getting the pollen from the anther right there to the stigma right there. Stigma is usually kind of sticky, and because it's sticky, uh, the pollen will stick to it very easily. Once the pollen grain gets there, it drills down through the style, drills down a tube, and from the pollen grain, sperm is released that comes down through that tube, and then it unites with the ova down here to fertilize the ova. So fertilization is the process of getting the sperm from the pollen grain here down into the ova, or down into the ovary where the ova are. Uh, pollination, getting pollen from the anther to the pistil, um, or from the, the stamen to the pistil, and fertilization is getting the sperm from here down to unite with the egg down in the ovary. Now, this part right here is called the capsule. All right, and the capsule, if I open that up, you can see that the, the style continues down inside of the capsule down to the very top part of the ovary. So the ovary is just that bottom part right here. So here's the stigma style and ovary. If I take this and I slice it very carefully right down the middle, like that, I didn't do a real good job. Let's try it again. And that looks a little bit better right there all right inside of that you can see these little tiny white dots those little tiny white dots right inside of there those are the ova and that is what's going to become the seeds once they are fertilized so once pollination occurs and these seeds have been fertilized the corolla is going to fall off the, the staple, uh, um, the sepals and the petals are going to fall off. All of the anthers are going to fall off with their filaments. So all the stamen are going to go. All of the pistil is going to fall off. And it's just going to leave that ovary. And as that ovary, as the seeds mature, that ovary is going to begin to swell and get larger. That swollen ovary with developing seeds on the inside is what we call a fruit. So be it an apple or a banana or whatever, that's the fruit of the plant and it has the seeds on the inside. So yes, when you're eating fruit, I know it sounds disgusting, but when you're eating fruit, you're actually eating the swollen ovaries of plants. I'm so sorry, but that's the reality. So I hope you go and enjoy now an apple or a banana or an orange or some other fruit of your choice and munch away on the swollen ovary because it's good for you.